Have you ever wanted to create your own presets in Houdini? Stay tuned and find out how. Hi, my name is Kays and welcome to another Red Brain tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you three quick, simple techniques that you can use to have some presets uh, available to you in Houdini so that you can kind of, uh, um, if there's anything that you tend to use from project to project, you don't have to like uh, rebuild everything from scratch every time, but you can actually kind of like uh, at the click of a button have um, you know, like a bit of VEX code or like uh, uh, nodes or networks available to you very, very simply and easily. So um, let's, sh I'll show you like uh, the first technique. So uh, this is um, pretty simple. We have a grid here that I created and let's say that I wanted to add a little bit of VEX code. So I use uh, an attribute uh, wrangle um, to add that. And uh, since I don't really know VEX code very well, uh, you might have noticed that if you click on this little right arrow, there's a bunch of um, kind of presets that come built into Houdini. So for instance, if I wanted to have like some random uh, color on my object, uh, I can just click on that and Houdini will automatically create the VEX code um, right here in the node so I don't have to like actually kind of type it. So um, have you ever wondered if you could add some additional bits of VEX code in here uh, and have your own presets in addition to the ones that Houdini gives you? And the answer is yes, and it's actually pretty simple. So I'll show you how. Um, if you watch my Houdini.emv um, tutorial, then you'll know um, everything about like where the folder um, is that contains the Houdini.emv file. So this is a folder that Houdini pulls every single time uh, whenever it's launching. And if we add this very, very simple text file into this directory, uh, Houdini will actually be able to kind of read um, any sort of additional presets and incorporate that into automatically into your projects. So um, what I'm going to do here, I just have like a uh, text editor and I've just created like a uh, text document and I'm just going to make sure that the format is like just plain text just to be on the safe side. And um, in this text uh, document, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to save it and I want to give it a very, very specific name. And the name that I want to call it is VEX Pressions.txt. Okay. So uh, that's what I want to save the file. I'm just going to save it on the desktop right now. Uh, hit save. And as I said, this is a very, very simple text file. And I'm just going to drag this file right here into this folder. So that's where it's going to live. So basically, wherever your Houdini.emv file is, you want to put it in this, into the same folder. So now that we have this VEX expression, uh, expressions file, this simple text file created, how do we actually go about, um, you know, putting like little bits of VEX code in here so that Houdini is going to recognize and it's going to show them uh, into our drop-down menu? So um, you need to do like a little bit of uh, careful formatting, I'm gonna, but, uh, but once again, it's pretty simple. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to like tell Houdini um, where you want this uh, preset to appear. So in this particular case, uh, I want it in my attribute wrangle node. So uh, I'm just going to click, uh, just copy and paste this little bit of code and all it says is attribute wrangle forward slash snippet. Okay, so that's our first line. So anything that follows this initial attribute wrangle forward slash snippet needs to be indented by a tab. So I'm just going to hit like tab and then I'm just going to type. Uh, so the first thing that you type is actually like what this preset is going to be called and I'm just going to call it create normals. Okay, some of you probably already know where I'm going with this. So this is going to be what the preset is going to be called, create normals. So then I'm just going to hit return again, hit tab one more time, and this is where I'm actually going to type the VEX code that I want to appear in my attribute wrangle. So uh, as I said, the simplest bit of VEX code that I know is simply how to create normals, and all it is is um, at n equals at n semicolon and that's it so this is just like a little bit of VEX code that creates um, normals and if I hit save now it's part of this VEX pressions text file and if I quit Houdini as I said Houdini kind of pulls everything that's in this folder uh, at every time that it launches so now it's gonna see that oh there's a VEX pressions file I should probably pay attention to that so now if I uh, go and uh, create like another grid uh, and um, 
double click on it and now create like a vex uh, or I'm sorry an attribute wrangle node now uh, if I hit this button right here this uh, drop down menu you'll see that I now have this create normals um, preset available to me and um, Houdini didn't get rid of like the ones that come bundled into Houdini. It just basically um, appended this additional bit of code um, to my list. So if I click on this, here it is. It's just kind of, uh, it's just like my very simple basic VEX code. And of course, let's say like uh, you want to do something a little more complicated. So um, let me get rid of this um, uh, node and I'm just going to increase the resolution of my grid right here and I'm going to create another attribute wrangle and in this one I'm gonna uh, copy and paste a bit of uh, something a little more complicated uh, so I have this uh, little bit of um, vex code that I found online and I'm just gonna hit uh, command paste and um, you'll see here that there's actually some ch um, lines of code in here and every time that you see ch you need to hit this uh, little uh, um, uh, slider um, icon right here because it will create additional parameters that then you can manipulate so um, let me see here okay now we can see them so um, what this particular bit of code does I'll show you is uh, let me uh, put like a radius of 10 and a frequency of 2 speed 2 amplification point 0.5 and number of points is 0 it creates this kind of ripple effect and if I hit uh, play you'll see exactly what this little bit of vex code does it's creating this bit of rippling effect so let's say that we wanted to add this into our um, you know our available presets so once again all we have to do is uh, I'm just gonna stop this and I'm just gonna quit because we're gonna have to restart Houdini anyway and I'm going to go back into my VX expression um, file. And now I'm just going to like copy and paste and just tell it, okay, we want another bit, another snippet, another preset. So I'm just going to copy and paste this. I'm just going to uh, put a uh, space in between. And I'm going to give this uh, a name and I'm going to call it uh, Ripple Wave Geometry, something like that. And now uh, all I have to do is just kind of um, command paste from my uh, vex code that I had. Whoops, um, that I have here on the side, and right like so. And the trick is that you want to make sure that all the vex code is indented. It has like a tab, so that it's all kind of indented um, by a tab click on your um, on your keyboard. And this is how like Houdini needs to see this bit of code. And of course, you can kind of like have a whole bunch of additional uh, bits of code. And if I save this and I uh, once again relaunch Houdini uh, and double click on it, dive into it, increase my resolution to 64 by 64. And then I'm going to add my um, attribute wrangle. If I click on the drop down now, I have my ripple wave geometry available to me. So here it is. And here's all the VEX code that I had in my, um, that I typed into my VX expressions uh, .txt file. So uh, once again, um, this is the code that pops up, but I have to hit my little slider icon if I want my uh, controls to appear. So click on the slider icon. And here's my uh, various sliders. And now, once again, I can kind of adjust the radius, adjust the frequency, adjust the speed, adjust the amplification, and off we go. So now we have something that we can kind of pull up and reuse anytime that we need it, um, that we want this particular effect. So that's method number one. Method number two is what if you don't want to, like, actually have to re hit this uh, little slider every time? Uh, what if you wanted to kind of basically be ready to go. As a matter of fact, what if you want uh, certain types of parameters in here? So let's say that, uh, for instance, uh, uh, this is going a little bit too slow, so maybe I want to increase the speed to uh, 3. Uh, maybe I want to increase the frequency of the waves. Uh, let's say we want like 5 waves, but maybe the amplification of this is a little too high, so I want it to uh, maybe be a little more subtle, so I'm just going to put like 0.1. So it's, it's more of a just kind of like very, very um, subtle and smooth kind of uh, wave propagation right here. So I have my presets, I have my code. 
how do I create a preset in Houdini that allows me to kind of like basically kind of have these exact settings for this type of node uh, without having to go through all the trouble that I've been through. Once again, it's really, really simple. Um, highlight the node and click on this little icon here that is this, uh, this little uh, mechanical gear uh, icon. And if we click on it and um, you'll see right here, there's like this uh, very, very uh, simple command that says save preset and that's exactly what we want to do. So I'm just going to click save preset. I'm going to call this uh, uh, ripple wave geometry. Okay. And I'm just going to hit save preset. So now let's get rid of this attribute wrangle completely and let's create a brand new one. So here's a blank attribute wrangle. And now if I click on this gear icon once more and I look all the way to the bottom, there's going to be this preset that I just created called ripple wave geometry. And if I click on this, not only is it going to pull up all of the code that I just had um, into the attribute wrangle, but it's also going to have the same preset that I had when I saved it, uh, like the same settings. So uh, if I hit play, I see the same exact motion as I had just a minute before in the other uh, attribute wrangle. Now, one of the cool things that you should know about um, this particular technique is that it can be applied not just to attribute wrangles, but just about every single node that you can think of. So for instance, let's get rid of this. And let's say that I'm always starting my projects with a cube. However, I want my cube to have very specific dimensions because that's the way I work normally. So let me just kind of create a box. Okay. So here's a box node. And let's say that uh, I always want this to be a polygon mesh. I always want it to have at least like 16 by 16 by 16 divisions. And let's say that I always want it to have a size of uh, five by five by five. Okay, so this is something that I want to start out and work with every single time that I pull up the box. So once again, like we have this very simple box node and I just click on my uh, gear icon right here and I just hit save preset and I'm just going to call it like K's box and save preset right here and now if I create any other box I can just simply click on here and say K's box and now I have this really handy dandy um, automatically configured cube the way I want it to my specifications without having to, for me to retype these values every single time. So this is another cool, neat little um, time saver. Okay, so that's technique number two. <laughs> technique number three, what if you have something that's a little more complicated? What if you have an actual network of nodes? So I'll give you a practical example. If you've seen my uh, Redshift materials tutorial, then you know that uh, I like to create Redshift materials and assign different textures to different parts of the Redshift um, uh, you know, inputs. So uh, I'm here in my mater material uh, context. I'm just going to like right click and go under like Redshift and create a material bu builder. Okay. So, uh, and I can just call this uh, basically uh, base, uh, let me call it like redshift base material or a base template. How's that? So I'm going to dive right into it and I have my redshift material and I'm just going to create another uh, RS material in here that I'm going to connect to my surface. Um, so then uh, let's say that I want to configure this for um, uh, you know, some PBR textures. So I'm going to create uh, like a texture node, RS texture, and I'm going to call this my uh, albedo texture. I'm just going to connect this right into my uh, diffuse color. And then I'm going to um, create another texture node right here. And this is going to be my roughness map, roughness map. And I want the roughness map to actually have a linear gamma, so I'm just going to enable the gamma overwrite. And, and I'm going to pipe this right into the base properties under like reflection roughness. So here's my roughness map. So let's say that I have an ambient occlusion map. Um, so once again, this is going to be like a texture that's going to come in from like some um, uh, PBR texture collection. So I'm just going to call this AO and uh, also cavity sometimes um, kind of sort of does something very similar to ambient occlusion. So once again, I want this to uh, have a linear gamma and I'm just going to pipe this into my overall color. Um, 
So then let's say that I have a normal map. So uh, once again, uh, texture, RS texture, and uh, this one, I don't want to have a linear gamma because it's going to be like a normal map. And I'm just going to call this normal. And I'm going to pipe this into a bump node, bump map nodes. I'm going to make sure that the bump map node is actually a tangent space normal because this is going to be a normal map. And then I'm just going to pump it into my bump map, which I can put either here or in the overall, but I like to kind of put it here if I'm using it for the overall texture. And last but not least, maybe I have a displacement map. So uh, once again, I pull up uh, another texture node. And I'm going to call this displacement. Uh, displacement. So this is going to be a linear um, gamma, and uh, this is going to go straight into a displacement, RS displacement node. And then the RS displacement is going to go right into this displacement. So this is kind of like, um, you know, let's call this my basic kind of, um, you know, redshift sort of template, my base templates. So uh, if I'm working with PBR textures, chances are I'm going to have to do this every single time. And I don't want to do this every single time. I want to kind of save my, um, you know, save having to like create these nodes every single time that I want to create like a brand new redshift material. So how do I do this? Um, if we go back up to the material context, uh, where are we? To my RS base template. If I uh, click on this guy right here and I say save preset, and I'm just gonna save it as um, uh, RS um, base template right here, okay? So I'm just gonna save this as a preset. So now I'm just gonna create another uh, Redshift node. So um, RS material builder. And I'm going to go right here. I'm going to be like, hey, uh, do it as a base template. I'm going to click OK. Here it is. I'm going to dive right in. And oh, wait a minute. What is going on? All my nodes are gone, right? So basically, this is because when you save a preset, the preset is actually kind of just saving what's contained in the node that you have highlighted at the time. It's not actually saving whatever is inside that node, okay? And this is true for any sort of network in Houdini. So whether you're uh, uh, creating like a material, whether you're creating like a VOP network or anything that contains additional nodes inside, this is not going to do the trick. This is not going to work for you. So how are we going to do it since uh, the, our little preset um, uh, method is not going to work for this? Um, so the way that I like to do it is to actually use galleries. And uh, if you're not familiar with galleries, galleries is basically like another layer of presets that Houdini gives you. And uh, the nice thing about galleries is that not only does it save whatever is in that specific node, uh, at a given time when you you know when you save it, but it actually kind of saves everything that's contained within that node. So uh, let me get rid of this guy. And uh, so we have our base template and the way I save the gallery is actually quite simple. Just right click on your node and uh, under save, um, just click uh, save to gallery. Um, and this pulls up uh, this, uh, this window and you can kind of give it a name and a label, but uh, for me, this works just fine, um, whatever it defaults to. I'm just going to click Accept. And now, uh, how do I access this in my library? Uh, it's actually quite simple. You go under your Window menu, and uh, there is like a um, Gallery Manager right here. Click on this. It opens up this uh, window, uh, which basically has like everything that's contained in your gallery. Um, you'll see like a lot of pre-existing things that come built into Houdini. But if we want to um, find uh, this um, this uh, network that I created, I'm just going to type in uh, RS. Um, and all I have to do is just kind of click on this and drag it right into my network. And here it is. And if I double click on it, you'll see that my internal node structure is retained as part of this uh, gallery uh, preset. So anyway, so this is it. I hope it helps you guys and I hope it saves you some time. Until next time, I'm Kays and thank you for watching.